You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heart of Amethyst. So the last place we left off, we're actually doing some kind of daily chores for Ellie, Eli, Eli. I think it's Eli. I think it's Eli. <laughs> but yeah, yeah he's been uh, he was taken under. Um, Almost God, almost called him Mr. Cannoli. Mr. Cannoli! Oh my God! <laughs> yes, I'm gonna call him Mr. Cannoli. He's was, he was, uh, taken over uh, Mr. Piscotti's wing, and he's raised by him and his wife. And you know, he's grown up quite a bit. So let's jump right back in, guys. Please sit back and enjoy. Let me continue for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. Okay. Hmm. And make sure to walk away slowly, making the wood under my feet crack as least as least as possible. I wouldn't know how to explain this to the old man, so it's better if he doesn't notice at all. Ooh. What do you want, Pat? I was sleeping. The figure steps out of the darkness, revealing a very tiny-looking jackal. An old friend of mine, you could say. Yeah, no shit. Had to knock like 20 times. I sigh, clearly frustrated that I was woken up this late at night. My sleeping schedule is often a mess, and for once... What are you doing here, anyway? I told you guys I'm not interested in going back to the gang. Those days are over. The little Jackal is looking around as if he was doing something sketchy. It wouldn't surprise me. Pat and the others are always up to no good. Stealing, pickpocketing, vandalizing, among other things. That's what they do. Yeah, yeah, I know. But you have to trust me, White. This time we have a huge deal, and Hugo wants you there personally. He knows you're the best at picking locks. I huff, knowing that is true, but tired of hearing him talk. You guys always have an excuse to ask me back, but like always, my answer is still no. Night, Pat. But wait! <laughs> I'm about to turn around, but the jackal grabs my cloak and stops me from leaving. He looks kind of desperate. I decided to give him a little more of my time. I'm not sure why, I just did. I'm telling you, White, you don't want to turn down this offer. Hugo has been really patient with you because of the past you guys shared. You don't want to ruin that, do you? Is that a threat? I grab him by the collar, lifting him a few inches off the ground. I also frown and growl, trying to look as intimidating as possible. You're a few inches away from being able to th You're a few inches away from being able to threat me, Pat. I know, White. I didn't mean it like that. The little guy is shaking. He always he's always been a coward. A type of sketchy fellow that would rather let others fight for him. But he really needs help with this one. I'm telling you, it's big. I drop him as I raise my eyebrow. Normally Hugo isn't this insistent, but something feels off tonight which piques my curiosity. Talk. I say coldly, but even so, the jackal smiles happily. I knew you would come around, White. Hugo will be happy to see you. I haven't agreed to anything yet. Talk, Pat, before I lose my temper. The little guy squirms around, clearly shaken by the threat. He takes a few steps back from me, then clears his throat. Mm. So, um, you know the king, right? Uh, obviously not. Oh, uh, yeah, oh, yes, a uh, dumb question. Uh, point is, tomorrow Mr. King is finally running away with his tail tucked between his legs. A reliable source told us that after that tomorrow, multiple carriages will reach the port at noon. With the King among them, of course, but most importantly, many of his riches. Wait, are you guys planning to... Yes, we'll steal from the King himself. We'll be rich, White. Freaking rich, I tell ya. This is big indeed. It's risky, but these guys know how to make a distraction, which means that I would be free to check the carriage myself. But is it really worth it? What if I get caught? I don't want to go to the cells again. Seeing Mr. Biscotti's expression as how he saw me in the dungeon that time was heartbreaking enough. That being the real reason why I left the gang in the first place. But still, with that much gold, we could live the rest of our lives without needing to worry about a thing. Meaning that I could focus on the search of my sister while giving him the life he deserves. So, Yin White... His voice makes me jump, as I, as I was deep in thought. Balancing the good with the bad, I think this is worth a shot. It may actually be the last chance I get at earning good money. Tell Hugo I'll be there, but make sure you tell him that he better not bail on me again, or this time I'll rip his balls off for sure. Understood? I knew we could count on you, partner. See you tomorrow. The Jackal nods a few times before setting off into the darkness. I watch him vanish in front of me. He may be weak, but he sure knows how to vanish. Once I make sure he's far away, I lean on a wall and then lie on the floor. I look up to the sky and sigh, not sure if I took the right if I took the right decision. 
But there's no turning back now. I have to commit to this. So they better have a good plan. Oh boy. The next morning comes up real fast. I didn't get much sleep, though, because my mind kept racing back and forward, thinking about the decision I took yesterday. I can't help but wonder if I rushed it. Mr. Biscotti gave me breakfast and tried to chat with me, but I'm far too distracted to put up a decent conversation. Hey, boy, you okay? Seems like your head is in the clouds today. That snaps me out of it. I try to feign a smile, but he knows me far too well for, to fall for that. Eh, I didn't get much sleep last night, that's all. Something on your mind? Gee, am I that obvious? You could say that, yeah. I'm just, uh, not ready to be a grown-up. I try to come up with something on the spot. He has no reason to doubt me, so I hope that he buys it. Well, there's its ups and downs, but you'll get through it. You're a really smart boy. Oh, yeah, thanks. Really? Is that all you got? Come on, Eli. Come up with something else. Oh, I was thinking. I still haven't decided on a gift yet, so I'll do that today if that's okay. Don't worry, I'll just be out for a while after lunch. No need... Uh, need anything from the Central Market? He places his hand on his chin and looks up, probably trying to remember if he needs anything. Eventually, he denies with his head. Not at all. You do your thing and be careful, okay? Thanks. We didn't do much for the rest of the day. But when it was time for me to leave the guilt in my gut almost... Well, it was time for me to leave the guilt in my gut almost ate me alive. Because when he saw me leave, he smiled. Mm. Now I'm standing in the promised alley, waiting for Pat to show up. Soon enough, I see the little jackal's figure down the street. He enters the alley, trying not to look suspicious. So? I ask, feeling the palms of my hands sweating like crazy. It's been a few months since I did this, and I don't feel ready at all. Hugo and the others are in place already. But we'll just wait until the carriages arrive. We'll make sure to create a nice and explosive distraction. It'll be just you and me, like old times. I huff at the last comment. Hugo may be a sketchy guy and a big jerk, but at least he has some sort of honor. Pat, on the other hand, I wouldn't bet a single Andrus on him, even if my life depended on it. Relax, White. After we steal from the king, we'll be swimming in gold. So, what's the signal? Oh, trust me, you'll know. Just wait for a big bang. My ears perk up at that. Does that mean Hugo is using his fire magic again? Why would Hugo use fire magic again? Is he crazy? Don't worry, White. He won't. This time our provider made a deal with a merchant from the east. And you know what they say. Cats make the best explosives. I am not familiar with that statement. <laughs> he winks and giggles back at me. Not really calming me down. The opposite, actually. Well, at least that idiot won't be using magic. Although, what sort of benefactor did these guys get this time? If they bought from the felines themselves, they must be wealthy. No use beating around the bush. Need to focus. Okay, then. Need to climb this roof so we can see them coming. After you, then. <clears throat> oh, God. Scratchy throat. I move to the side and allow him to try to jump onto the wall. Little Jackal tries to climb the wall, but his legs won't even reach, making me chuckle at the sad sight in front of me. His huffs, uh, He huffs annoyed. Poor fellow can't help but be tiny. I kind of understand his pain. I'm not the tallest man around, so I decide to not be a jerk and help him out. Here, give me your foot. I squat, placing my back to the wall as I join my hands together, giving the little guy a stepping place. Can we not talk about this? My lips are sealed. <laughs> oh boy. Time passes and I begin to have my doubts. What if their source isn't reliable and it just played them? It wouldn't be the first time these idiots got scammed by a reliable source. I remember the time when a guy told us that there was a secret gold mine outside of the city skirts. The catch being that we needed to pay them ten gold coins. I did say it sounded dumb, but Hugo thought it was worth the shot. It turned out to be rocks. I gaze into the distance, feeling sleepy all of a sudden. We've been waiting in this roof for a while and nothing has happened. I'm tired of waiting, I sit up, stretching my now sore muscles. Seems like you guys got scammed again. I'll head home. Wait, you can't leave! The sun is already setting, Pat. We've been here for hours. I'm not spending another second frying myself on this roof. But, but... I knew I shouldn't have trusted them, but a part of me really wanted this to be. I stop in my tracks as I hear the sound of horses approaching. Wait. Are those really? Get down! Pat drags me down, making me land on my ass. Shit, it hurts. But I have no time to complain, as in the distance I can see three big and luxurious-looking carriages. See? I told you this was the real deal. Now let's get ready. 
We lie down as close to the roof as possible, trying not to let the guards see us. According to their source, our target is the last carriage, the vault. The first one is the most guarded one, as there are five guards around it. The second and third have only two guards surrounding them, which makes, them, which makes obvious where the king's at. The first two guards pass us by, and as the third one comes in front of us... Cover your ears! What? Oh! Holy moly! Before I even acknowledge what's happening, there's a big explosion in a building a few houses ahead of us. It was really big. Bigger than anything I've ever seen. As my senses finally come to, I can listen to the people running around, scared for their lives. The smoke fills the streets quickly. The darkest smoke I have ever seen, and the smell is really strong. Did the cats really make this? Ah, oh, shit, the mission, I almost forgot. Looking around, I spot Pat running towards the vault already. I follow suit and get down from the roof as well. Most of the guards are guarding the king's cart or running around like idiots trying to find the culprit. This gives us the perfect chance to reach the vault unnoticed. Okay, work your magic, White. I'll keep watch. Alright, gotcha. But make sure to keep watch. He nods as I get on my knee for easier access to the padlock. Once in position, I take out the lockpick. Are we in a lockpicking minigame? That'd be funny. I close my eyes as I insert the device into the keyhole. All the noise makes it difficult to focus, but I have to make do. I block their annoying screams and focus on my own heartbeat. I carefully move the lockpick around, making sure to notice any little noise or any sudden halts that my device comes to. The first gear takes me some time, but eventually I manage to break it. From there, the second one breaks easily. Yet the third? Hurry up, will ya? Shut your mouth, Pat! These things take time! He gulps, making sure not to make a single noise. And while I appreciate that, I would appreciate breaking his nose even more. But, but that's besides the point. <laughs> what do we got? By the way, I close my eyes again. Come on, just two more and we're done. You can do it, Eli. Uh-oh. There you go, the third one is finally broken. Gee, that jerk put on a real fight. Come on, baby, just one left. I can do this for sure. There, four. Pat, I got... Nope. Oh. Something extremely heavy hits me. It's sending me flying across the street. I swear that I heard my bones cracking. I hope to be wrong. I try to regain my strength, but I can't breathe and my limbs feel numb. My head is spinning and everything is blurry. I can hardly see a thing, just shapes running around. What the hell hit me? Don't move, runt! As I was trying my hardest to stand up, a second hit to the gut surrenders me to the ground. I puke a little, feeling my insides suffer from the sudden pain. My mysterious attacker pins me under, making it impossible for me to escape. Shit, this bastard is this dastard. This bastard is heavy. I feel like I can't even lift a finger. What is he, a bloody bear? Put out that fire and make sure the king is safe. His voice is strong and carries a lot of power. It's even a little scary. I can't really see who he's talking to. All I can barely do is hear pieces of what the others are saying, but nothing is clear. Damn, my head hurts like hell. And you, stand on your feet. I'm taking you with me, rat. He grabs both of my hands and places them behind my back, then forces me up, lifting me as if I was a mere feather. I grunt at the pain and try to break free, but he has an iron grip. It's hopeless. I've been caught. Again. Oh, dear. Oh, wow, that is a big dude. Slowly, my vision comes, too. I turn my head around, finally catching a glimpse of the scary-looking wolf man that has been keeping me captive. He's a big black wolf, at least a head taller than me, and pretty much a mass of muscles, which I can easily notice under his heavy-looking armor. He has a few scars on his face. A face that gives off a certain aura of authority and power. An overall scary-looking knight. Looking around, there's not a single person on the street anymore. They must have all fled because of the explosion. With their screams quieted down, all I can hear is the snapping of the snapping, the snapping of the fire. A sudden flow of guilt runs down my spine, as I finally notice how much, how much damage we did. We messed up real bad. And of course, I'm the idiot that gets caught. I'll kill Pat, I swear it. Please, dude, let go. I didn't mean... Quiet! Speak another word and I'll cut your head clean off. He, he can't do that. Can he? I check him up again. He has a claymore attached to his back. Which is not surprising, because he probably has the strength to swing that thing if it is a, as if it is a mere toy. That sight makes me gulp, as I know that he's not bluffing. He could kill me easily with that thing. I frantically tried to break free from him, but the wolf wasn't letting me go anytime soon. Try me! He whispers to my ear, making my blood run dry. Not only that, but he also managed to unsheath his blade with only his free hand. I'm screwed. Ah, oh dear. He held me there for a while until the sun had almost disappeared in the horizon. He never got tired or even moved an inch. He just commanded the other knights and waited. The fire had been put out and the other guards were dispersing the curious ones that wanted to get a glimpse of what was happening. 
Captain, everything has been taken care of. One of the many guys that has been running around approaches us, bowing in front of my captor. I'm guessing this jerk is a big deal. Well done. Get back to your post. The knight nods and walks away as quick as he came, not saying a word, never looking back. Now, there's only one thing left to do. I quickly find myself being forced to the ground. The big wolf hit the back of my leg, giving me no other option but to kneel. I'll execute you right here. I ought to teach your buddies a lesson. He gets his sword ready. One swift strike from that and I'm done. Am I done? Am I really going to die here? But please, don't do it! I would stay still if I were you, or else I might not cut your head properly. His voice is cold. He's really going to do this. I'm so sorry, Mr. Biscotti. Well, suddenly the door in front of the carriage opens and a very old-looking fellow steps out of it. He's wearing a very expensive-looking suit and looks as if he would break at any given moment. I've heard rumors that the king is over 90 years old, but seeing it this close... Your Majesty, please remain on the cart. Everything is being taken care of. Well, if everything is being taken care of, I don't see why this old well, this old wolf can't stretch out his legs a little. The big man grumbles but says nothing else. Meanwhile, the king turns his gaze to me. Or I think he does. I can't tell for sure because of the hair covering his face. He walks closer as he clearly as he is clearly inspecting me, and his eyes land on mine. He stares at them for a full minute, his face turning sour as if he just saw a ghost. This is honestly a little embarrassing. By the... By the goddesses! Sir Roderick, who is this boy? He's a mere street rat, your highness. He'll be executed on the spot as a lesson to the others who will most likely be watching us. The mention of my execution makes me tear up a little. No, I don't want to die! Please don't! Quiet! You don't dare, don't you dare speak in front of the king! At ease, Sir Roderick. No one needs to die, especially not such a young soul. That seems to shut him up for good. He didn't let go of me, though. A guy can dream. Here, child. Stand up. The king kindly helps me back on my feet. Of course, I'm still stuck on Roderick's grasp, but it's better than being on the floor, for sure. He never stops looking at me, as if I were a unique animal that he just found. Heavens! It's really you! What now? I say back. I say back, but I clearly irritated Roger because he holds me tighter and I hiss from the immense pain. So, Roger, please, do not hurt this child. But, sir, he's a mere street rat. He tried to steal from you, and it's highly likely that he and his companions ignited the fire. Yes, that seems to be the case, but I must have a chat with this child. So get him ready, Sir Roderick. We shall take him with us to Rose Island. That statement leaves both Roderick and I speechless, and neither of us knows how to respond to what the king just said. He says nothing after that, lost in thought as he stares into my eyes. M m my liege, are, are you certain that's a good idea? You don't know what this kid. You don't know this kid. He's a criminal. He finally snaps out of it. Meanwhile, I remain quiet throughout the whole interaction between the two of them. Clearly, traveling to that fort is better than them to being executed in the middle of the street. But what would they do to me once we're there? Sir Roderick, uh, don't make me repeat myself. He shall accompany us to the fortress. I'll leave you in charge of the security as per usual. The king speaks with a commanding voice, quite impressive for an old man because he managed to shut up the knight. After that, he just vanishes back into the carriage, leaving me at the mercy of the wolf. You're lucky the king has such a great heart, you little rat. Now, go to sleep. What? <laughs> the last thing that I saw before losing consciousness was his mighty fist hitting my face. After that, nothing comes to mind. Just darkness. I don't dream, I don't feel, I don't think. Just darkness. I've never seen anything like this before. Is someone there? What is it? I can faintly hear some voices, but I'm not fully conscious yet, so I can't say for sure, but they both sound like males. Uh, these marks are not normal. They're not tattoos of any sort, and I can sense a faint ancient magic coming from them. Besides, his iris. It's purple. Purple? Are you sure you checked properly? That's impossible. I know what I saw. Ch check for yourself if you don't believe me. There's a momentary silence, and then I feel a gentle touch. He presses his paw against my face, but then moves it away. Nah, I believe you. Better not to wake the Sleeping Beauty. That book is awful. You should read something better than that. Said touch suddenly moves to my chest and then my torso. Do you think they reach further down? You mean the marks? Yeah, they do. They're engraved throughout his whole right side. Meaning that he has him on his dick too? There's a sudden awkward silence. Oh, by the goddesses, you checked his dick, didn't you? Uh, of course I did, you idiot. The king asked me to run a whole checkup on him. Well, how did it look? I'm not telling you that. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think I'm done with this conversation. Time to wake up. Oh, hello, people. Interesting markings, huh? Slowly but steadily, I regain my vision. 
I can see two men standing by the end of the bed I'm laying on. The room itself looks extremely fancy, and I must admit that I feel really tempted to keep pretending to be asleep, just to be able to lay on this bed for longer. They haven't noticed that I've opened my eyes already, so I could probably pull it off, but there's no real point to do that. I need to know what the hell is going on. I try to stand up, even if all the muscles of my body beg me not to. No! You're awake! Careful now, mate! The brown wolf walks closer, greeting me with a smile. His voice is sweet and calming. Same for his overall behavior. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Well, we got quite a bit happening in this episode today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Ooh, excuse me. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!